Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The old phrase, uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I can tell you my absence from this place has only made my fondness for it grow stronger over the last four years. It's great to be back here representing the great riding of Dufferin Caledon. I want to quickly do a shout out to our former Member of Parliament, David Tilson, who retired and represented this riding so well from 2005 to 2019. Unfortunately, I'm going to say that this throne speech does not represent the riding of Dufferin Caledon nearly as well as David Tilson did, or how I hope to represent it. And I'm going to talk about three things that the throne speech either ignores or really gives short shrift to. And these three things are infrastructure, rural broadband, and agriculture. When we talk about infrastructure, there is no mention in this throne speech of investing in transit for rural and small communities in this country. And let me tell you, these communities need investments in infrastructure. They desperately need it in infrastructure and transit. And I'll give you an example. In Orangeville, one of the municipalities in my riding, they are trying to uh, buy new buses to expand bus routes. This is a government that allegedly cares about climate change. Why would you not be investing in transit? So, the project is $2.1 million, and I can tell you this, the provincial government has stepped up with $667,000, their one-third share. It's wow. in the bank. Where's the answer from the federal government? I can tell you, as of January of this year, the Orangeville Transit Task Force has told me they have heard crickets from this government. It's disrespectful, and it's neglecting small communities. And I can tell you this. One of the things my constituents talk about is exactly that, the need for transit and the need for investments. This government seems to be able to invest in all kinds of things, allegedly. They deficits $20, $25 billion a year, but there's absolutely nothing for rural Canada and small town Canada when we talk about transit. And in addition to that, they cancelled the transit tax credit, which is always a benefit. In the riding of Dufferin Calvin, there are critical infrastructure deficits for small municipalities. I can tell you, I held a town hall meeting in Shelburne, another small municipality in my riding, last week. And in Shelburne, they are talking about the urgent need for investments in bridges and roads in their communities. The township of Melanchthon is an agriculturally based municipality. They have 248 kilometers of roads, as well as 51 bridges and other structures. They had an engineering report in 2019 that came out, dealing with roads, bridges, culverts that need desperate repair. Many of them are at the absolute end of their lifespan. It will take $6 million just to deal with that problem. When you deal with all of their infrastructure needs, roads, bridges, and culverts, it's another $6.6 .6 million over 10 years. And this is a township that has an annual budget of $4 million. How are they going to repair these bridges? Where was the mention in this throne speech, their document to outline the priorities for this country over the next four years? Not a single mention. In the township of Amaranth, they have eight bridges that have to be replaced in the next year alone. The next year, $5.3 million. And guess what? Their annual budget is also approximately $4 million. Are these types of critically needed investments mentioned by the government in their throne speech? Absolutely not. They are not there. And yet, this government will talk about, they call it a buyback of guns as part of their program. They're not buying back. They're going to require law-abiding Canadians to sell their guns to the government with estimated costs of $250 million to $1 billion to buy these things back, force people to sell them back to the government, which will add nothing to public safety. These are law-abiding citizens. But they don't have any money for small and rural municipalities. I think that's disgraceful, and they should be doing better. I can tell you this, at my town hall meeting, the frustration and the anger from small town Canada and rural Canada is palpable. They are not being heard by this government. They are not mentioned in the throne speech. 
and they know they're not a priority. What they do know is the priority of this government is to buy votes in the larger urban centres. That's all they care about. The rest of Canada, too bad, so sad. With respect to rural broadband, I used to represent a riding in Brampton. You can drive 15 minutes north from Brampton into Caledon and guess what? There is almost no broadband. Cellular service is awful, rural broadband is awful. And again, was this mentioned in the throne speech? This is a critical infrastructure investment across this country and it doesn't even get a mention. Not even a small little blurb at all. Talking to the farmers in my riding, you know what they have to do? They have to drive into town to Tim Hortons to download software upgrades for their machinery and equipment. That's a wonderful solution, isn't it? And guess what? They have to do the same thing if they want their children to get access to homework and other online tools that all school districts now provide. They have to leave their house, drive to Tim Hortons where they can get reliable, where they can get reliable Wi-Fi. Where was that again in the throne speech? Just completely ignored. This lack of service is killing small businesses in my riding and in ridings similar to it all across this country. And the response from this government is absolutely nothing. When you win an election, you are supposed to govern for all the people in your country, not just the people that gave you votes. So to my friends across the aisle, please rethink your strategy towards rural and small town Canada because they are suffering under this government. Mr. Speaker, again, the province of Ontario is stepping up to help with this. They are investing $315 million over five years for unserved and underserved areas. And this is expected to generate up to $1 billion of total investments when it's matched with the private sector. These are the kind of investments that this government should be doing, not spending $250 million to $1 billion forcing law-abiding gun owners to sell their legally purchased guns back to the government. The final point I want to raise is with respect to agriculture and farmers. Again, farming almost completely neglect neglected in the throne speech. Farmers are facing huge challenges, not just in my riding, but all across the country. I would love it if members of this government would come and sit down in my community and hear what the farmers have to say. These are hard-working people, hard-working families who are suffering as a result of a lack of access to markets for soy and canola. <coughs> They're suffering as a result of a carbon tax to dry their corn and dry their wheat. This was a very wet year in Ontario. And if you wanted to get your corn to be processed, you had to dry it. And the carbon tax that's being charged to farmers to dry their corn and grain is highway robbery. They can't afford it, they're struggling, and they don't even merit a mention in the throne speech. You know, the U.S. government is stepping up for their soy and canola farmers. They've got a $28 billion market facilitation program. I asked the minister about this back in November, and I got, oh, we're going to talk, we're going to meet, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Well, now we're at the end of January, and there has still been no substantive action taken on this. In Ontario, we lost processing capacity for the beef industry. This is critical. In talking with some of the farming families in my riding, I can tell you this. When they looked for an alternative place to have their cattle processed, they were told, well, we can handle that in April. This was in November. So that family has to pay to feed their cattle for the next five months at cost, and those cattle are going to be oversized and they're going to have to pay more in penalties to have those, uh, th th that cattle processed. What's the response from the government? What have they done? Was it mentioned in the throne speech? These are hard-working Canadian families who are suffering and they don't even deem a mention in the throne speech. It is having a devastating effect. Mr. Speaker, I have to say I will be voting against this throne speech as there is absolutely nothing in it for the residents of my riding 
and for residents across this country in small towns and rural communities. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for King's Hands. Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank uh, the member opposite for uh, his speech here in reply. Um, first of all, I'd like to say, coming from a rural community myself in Nova Scotia, he mentioned agriculture. Uh, I want him to rest assured that there are members on this side that are focused on those issues, and I look forward to working collaboratively with him in the days ahead. But the crux of his speech was about infrastructure. And Mr. Speaker, I don't know if this member was not paying attention for the last four years, but there has been historic investments on this side of the aisle in terms of investments in Canada. Four times the amount of infrastructure projects that have been approved in the last four years alone versus the Harper government from 2011 to 2015. We doubled the gas tax infrastructure. I assume his municipality would be a federation of Canadian municipalities. We put more money into there. So while this member may suggest that we are not investing, I ask him to look at the investments we've laid in the last four years and the investments that he and his, gov and his opposition had voted against in the last four years. Here, here. For Dufferin Caledon. Mr. Speaker, for Melanchthon County, the gas tax is $91,000 this year. $91,000 for $6 million worth of infrastructure that is desperately needed. So maybe all this infrastructure money is flowing into ridings like his and Liberal-held ridings in Toronto. But I can tell you this, meeting with the Reeves and councillors and the wardens in the rural municipalities that I represent, the money is not flowing to them. And that's the issue, and that's what I'm here for, to fight for them, to make sure that they get some fair share of the giant deficits that this government's running. Monsieur le Président, je tiens à remercier mon collègue pour son discours. Je viens également d'une circonscription rurale et je me demandais s'il serait prêt à voter avec le Bloc québécois quand il sera temps de défendre la gestion de l'offre, du moins ce qu'il en reste pour protéger notre agriculture. Bravo. Well, thank you very much for the question. I welcome the opportunity to respond. In the riding of Dufferin Caledon, we have a large dairy industry, and I am absolutely fully supportive of supply management. We'll always vote in favor of it. The Honourable Member for Cowichan, Malahat, Langford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm really glad to uh, hear my colleague uh, represent the topic of agriculture because it was sadly lacking in the throne speech. And I have now had the opportunity to serve as our party's agriculture critic for the last two years. Uh, I too represent a rural riding that has a very long and storied history in agriculture that goes back beyond Confederation. And you know, one thing we heard from uh, farmers is that they are very much on the front lines of climate change. That happened repeatedly at the Standing Committee on Agriculture. And, and you know, the, the wet weather that we've seen, which has resulted in the high cost of drying grain, that is going to continue in the future. We are going to see more and more adverse weather effects uh, affecting farmers who will see their crops be affected by climate change. So, you know, there are tools available like business risk management programs which can take care of the high cost, but I'm just wondering, given the fact that farmers are facing this challenge head on, what is his answer to his constituents uh, in fighting climate change? What policies does he think can actually help them weather these storms? Member <clears throat> for Dufferin Caledon. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, of course, farmers are always great stewards of the land and they're always very interested in making sure that we have an environment that allows them to farm both sustainably and responsibly. Uh, one thing I can tell you I'm not in favour of is a carbon tax because it's going to do absolutely nothing to uh, affect climate change. What we actually have to realise in this House and in this country is that climate change is global and we can reduce all our emissions to zero in this country and guess what? All that CO2 space will be used up by China with their growing emissions in six months. So if there actually isn't concerted international action with respect to the big emitters in the, uh, around the world, nothing we do in this country is going to prevent the harmful effects of climate change and that's where this government needs to start working. Time for just uh, one short question. The Honourable Member for uh, Lac saint louis Speaker, uh, the member said there was nothing in the throne speech about agriculture, but the throne speech and the election platform includes a commitment to create a Canadian water agency. And I would uh, suspect that a great focus of that agency would be on uh, water uh, and agriculture. And we know that uh, water is the lifeblood of agriculture. So if we can solve irrigation challenges, we can give a boost to agriculture. 
uh, does the member not agree that this is one element of a, of, of a, a strategy for addressing agricultural concerns? I remember for Dufferin Caledon. Well, Mr. Speaker, a broken clock is right twice a day, and you know, coming up with one program that might address one small thing actually doesn't address any of the needs of the farming community in my riding and ridings all across this country. Nothing on soy and canola, nothing to help farmers in the beef industry in Ontario. These are the critical things that are going on in my riding right now. Well, that might be a great program. That and $1.50 will get the farmers in my riding a double-double and nothing else.